very good morning to all of you and uh, unfortunately because of some internet issues all of a sudden we stopped here 1837 1901 we call it victorian age and i told you that this particular age had multiple things going on multiple things happening together so this was the reason that we needed something to be related to a particular time tenure or a time span in short this was the time hundreds of things were happening together the colonization the rise of feminism then the development in literature development in society the development in financial structure the development in the labor laws the development in some other amendments rules regulations in short there are hundreds of things happening together to summarize everything to connect everything to a particular time period we needed something to be taken as a symbol so queen victoria's timing on the throne in 1837 1901 it was taken as a symbol this was taken as a symbol now what happens here see 1837 1901 as i told you that england was at the top of the world england was at the top of the world please uh, remember this point they may ask you that the best time for english uh, uh, people or england the best time was victorians because this time they proved their superiority this was the time they had multiple colonies hundreds of colonies so england was at the top of the world the world power you know uh, the place uh, it would show that Uh, if you remember the famous line that the sun in british empire never sets british samrajya ka suraj kabhi ast nahi hota because it's somewhere everywhere so once why at in one country if it's night it's setting another country it's rising in short england almost captured the world it conquered the world the best example is there was a question also in 2010 net exam the best example is the great exhibition the great exhibition the great exhibition of 1851 this was in crystal palace a mall designed by william paxton that i'll be telling you in detail when i'll teach you so it was a crystal palace a mall made of glass designed by william paxton in this mall the first great exhibition took place this was in 1851 one of the most important symbolic moment this particular moment is very important it speaks for english superiority the great exhibition speaks for english superiority it helped the english people to colonize the minds also two types of colonizations are there you colonize somebody physically that's also the part of imperialism having weapons power you make people follow you and second colonization control the mind put your thoughts in somebody's brain make people follow you make people get impressed from you make people feel inferior in front of you that's colonization the great exhibition was the reason to colonize the people because this was you know they were having the uh, show of everything from the world all the great kings great rich people they, they all attended this thing it has a symbolic value remember this point there was a question in an exam that who designed that mall william paxton okay now as we know this was happening we also know that what else were going on so the first thing colony setups colony setups okay second thing rise of feminism please note it down rise of feminism okay political situations the victorians got divided in parties the house of commons the house of lords so political uh, turmoil we can simply write then class developments class issues Victorians are the first people where we find a Victorian pyramid dealing with the class issues. Earlier in Romanticism, you know, uh, let's talk about the Elizabethan Chaucer restoration first. 
it was the peasant class and the aristocrats the commoners and the aristocrats the noble people the extreme rich people in romantics comes middle class the rise of middle class comes in romanticism many of us belong to middle class many of us uh, relate ourselves to middle class because we are not aristocrats we are not super rich we are not poor but some of us have faced or once we were but most of us connect to middle class in victorians even the middle class got distinctions differences the middle class got another side lower middle class upper middle class so the class gap the class structure it widened or jada ho gaya people started you know developing their own sectors the rich colonies are there the poor will belong to that place so this was also one of the issues in class uh, class references i'll be taking marxist references where i'll teach you about the class and victorian pyramids see along with these things multiple rules regulations they were either changed or lifted just like the victorian reform acts reform act aage bahut sare then the elector uh, the election and electoral rights were shared with people then condition of society after industrial revolution as i told you that the industrial revolution started in romanticism but in victorians it was at its peak so industrial revolution topic of the victorian scandal and you all know that all of a sudden when the machines take place when machines are everywhere unemployment is there have you ever thought the atms have killed the jobs kabhi socha aapne that these atms have killed the jobs otherwise you remember your parents would go to bank you were the kid and they would stand in the line waiting for the queue they would write it and then somebody will count money and give but now in atm you just have to tuck 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 got the money <laughs> imagine how many jobs have been killed by google pay phone pay and paytm you don't have to go to bank now your mini statement is with you your uh, passbook update is with you you can keep a track of your money so in short think about this you know crores of people are using uh, google pay phone pay paytm multiple other options of pay so do we have more vacancies in banks like do we really need people uh, to stay in banks no we don't need need a cashier now would we don't need more counters so this happened in victorians machines started working so the poor class they would usually work in the cotton mill industries they all became unemployed the greatest victorian writer ever charles dickens was working as a labor a young boy a child labor and he has shared his experience in fact when you read david copperfield you will cry you know it's like you feel the boy that young boy of 9 10 years working in the very worst situation and even just going to the window to take some fresh oxygen some fresh air he has described it so the you know machines cause unemployment trouble social gaps were widening and along with these things next there are so many other things also the development in various sectors development in economics development in science development in astrophysics multiple things one more important point Victorian compromise. This is important. Victorian compromise. What was this? See, faith related to religion, right? I'm sure. You will say yes of faith, religion, reason related to science. Now, what do you suggest? Which is more important? What do you want? Faith and religion. That yes, it happens. I have a faith or reason. Reason means that I know this happens. This is the reason. If you put. <laughs> water bottle in the fridge it will become cold that's reason because we have a reason behind this science behind this but can you say that i will put my bottle in the fridge and when i'll take it out it will become warm because i have faith in god like like if you are actually a believer you will say yes it's quite possible nothing is impossible but think about this i want to know i want to see your comments just tell me how many of you believe uh in first 
or you believe in second and if you say sir both then also i will agree you can also write both so we have 22 scholars right now here watching this tell me how many of you believe in option one faith connected to religion because the religion has given you faith religion has given you faith Yakub says both are necessary. Very good. Yes, you can go for both also. If you want to go for a proper balance. Kavita also says both. Very good. Both. Bahut badia. Anuj, Anuj goes for reason. Faith with reason. <laughs> Shahar bahut sahi. First science. Lavori says science. Very good. See, very good. Very good. Both are important. Both. Yes. I'll also uh, go for my opinion. For me, it's uh, reason. Science. Uh, <laughs> like even if I say both, then it's 80% reason to 20% fail. If you see widely, both are important. Very good. First priority to religion, then science. Uh, okay. So now think about the society here. Think about these people. They were also going through the same. Just like you people have two different opinions and a common opinion. Some of you purely supported science. Some of you purely supported science. Some of you purely supported religion. And some of you went for a fine balance between both. This same thing happened here in society. And this is called Victorian compromise. Science versus religion. Religion versus science. See, we all know that we were more religious in 15th century. In comparison of 18th century. In comparison of 21st century. In which particular... Uh, it as we were more religious obviously when there was no science or very less science we believed more in god for everything we believed more in god for everything but now we are at, uh, in, in the age you know it itself is a kind of revolution it's a revolutionary age you have multiple phones apps you can click a photo and send you know when we used to wonder that can we make a video call is it possible we speak to each other uh, seeing uh, from a distance 3000 kilometer and you talk to your family members it is possible now. But at that time we would wonder, you know, that will it be possible? Now you have got the watches, the watches track your steps, your breathings, your heartbeat. The watches also make calls. And what if uh, soon we will have the 3D images of the watch? You will do like this and there will be an image in front of you in some light and you'll talk. So the science keeps on challenging religion. Religion was trying to find out the reason to fight back religion needed religion needed to fight back yes what happens here most of the young people went for the support of science while the oldies the old guys those who had great faith in religion they became suspicious it's like they started thinking about their own life own faith suppose you are religious for 100 years you have given your life for religion and all of a sudden you get to know that there is no religion so how your trust will be broken so these things were happening here. There were multiple movements. One movement is Oxford movement. This is Victorian dilemma. This is a very important point. So Oxford movement. Started by Henry Cable, Newman, multiple writers were there. Also called Tractarian movement. Tractarian movement. This is same. Both are same. They are not different. Please remember. They are same. Oxford movement because most of the professors belong to Oxford. And Tractarian movement because they were writing tracts. Tracts in support of religion. So these guys, they were of the view that even if we are advancing, even if we are developing, even if we are uh, more scientific, it's because of God. The God wants us to move, become more scientific. So if you believe everything that God has created... Because obviously we do not have multiple, uh, uh, there are multiple, you know, theories. We don't know who we are, who made us, who makes us think, who gives the electricity to our heart to pump. So maybe it's God. We have been created by God. Why not others, the other animal life, other species, they speak, they have a proper social structure, but we have. So maybe we are favored by God. God has given us this virtue. So they started simply saying, that may it be any science, but lastly, it's God. 
see like i told you i don't go to the temples okay i generally, generally i don't go to the temples by choice okay but then i also told you when my result was going to be declared i went to all the temples so when we start fearing we go to god okay and this is the reason that voltaire said that if god doesn't exist it's better to invent him we need him so this was uh, the concept of victorians i'm sure you must have understood they are also called the great victorians the eminent victorians question of net exam who has written eminent victorians i will teach you all these points let us stretch it stretchy or stretchy whatever you call it let us stretchy has written eminent victorians very important it has been uh, really famous and deals with four people char log hai unse deal karta hai cardinal joseph and uh, then ek wahan pe wo tha uh, this lady uh, the lady of the lights lady with the lamp florence nightingale ek hai wahan pe general gordon and ek hai thomas arnold ye inke sath deal karta hai he talked about four great people i'll write it for you so that you take points homework for you is read some basic detail read at least basic okay he talks about four people the first one is thomas arnold father of matthew arnold okay second is lady with the lamp lady with the lamp i can be wrong uh, like i think it's uh, florence nightingale only but uh, somewhere i'm feeling doubt so i won't tell you a wrong thing Lady with the lamp, I remember. It's Florence Nightingale, I'm sure. I think होना तो वही चाहिए. Third is General Gordon. And fourth is Cardinal, some religious person. Cardinal Joseph. These are the four people who have been praised, the greatest Victorians. One comes from the school developments, the reformations in the schools. one comes who gave heights to nursing profession and stood for humanity one comes from army background and was someone amazing and one comes from religious background so four people four different backgrounds representing victorian changes they have been praised here it's a question of net exam they simply ask you who are these four people pick the odd one out who doesn't belong to this group or who has written this book remember this point it's a question and ask question repeated one So, ये क्वेश्चन आपको आना चाहिए एग्जाम में टेक अ स्क्रीनशॉट इफ यू फॉरगेट दिस इफ यू आर नॉट रिटर्न नहीं लिखा है तो स्क्रीनशॉट लो क्लियर आई बी हियर जस्ट टेक स्क्रीनशॉट फॉर फाइव सेकंड्स इफ यू वांट टू टेक स्क्रीनशॉट्स गुड इफ यू हैव रिटर्न इट्स वेरी गुड इट्स द ग्रेट एग्जीबिशन क्लियर सो वी गेट बैक टू अनदर पॉइंट नाउ Now the question is that what kind of writers were the, these guys? Why Victorian literature is famous? So we shift to literature. See, Victorian literature primarily poetry. Lord Alfred Tennyson. It's better to be loved. It's better to have been loved and lost than to be uh, than to be never loved at all. He said. it's really good to be loved and then losing the love then to be never loved at all it's like the ehsas the emotion itself is very important tennyson then we know r browning the lover boy his wife lady browning elizabeth barrett browning actually elizabeth barrett browning her most of her sisters eloped elizabeth barrett had multiple sisters and some two or three sisters they went for love marriage and father had a record what was the record papa ka kya record tha elizabeth barrett ki do ya teen badi sisters thi unhone love marriage ki thi and father was like this get out so father had a record of expelling them from the house you know he just disowned his daughters so when elizabeth barrett and brownie they met each other it is written by browning also he browning says that that i fell in love with her at the doorstep only he went to meet her he loved the poetry she was more famous than him ye zyada famous thi zyada acha likhti thi she was you know far better than him 
So Browning got very much uh, in, uh, inspired and wanted to meet the lady who has written these beautiful poetries. Browning went, knocked at the gate. When she opened the gate, Browning says, I fell in love at the doorstep. Like it was a love at first sight. So they dated for some years. Her cousin was helping her to meet Browning. They both had uh, poetic talent. So intellectual standard was met, uh, matching. And finally, she eloped with him. They went to Italy. Italy chale gaye. Inko pata tha, she knew this ki papa ne kya karna hai. Papa ne mere ko bhi ghar se nikal lena hai. <laughs> they went to Italy. Browning became famous because he's the one who became more famous after this. The question was like that, who is this guy who has eloped with Lady, uh, Lady Elizabeth Barrett? So somebody, kaun sa wo writer hai, naya writer hai, jo Elizabeth Barrett ke saath uh, eloped ki hai, bhaag gaya hai. So Browning became more famous. After marriage, Lady Browning stopped writing. Like the public sphere. For public sphere, she stopped writing. Her poetry became more personal. And trust me, these poetry are just amazing. If you can feel the true love, just read her poetry. Bohut achha se naam hai. Call me by my nickname, the name I used to run at. Ka call me by my pet name. How do I love thee? Uh, let me count the ways. But these poetry were very personal. She said that I will not publish it for people now. I will uh, write my poetry just for you. Browning wanted these poetry to be published. He said that you have a talent and let people know that you have a talent. But she believed that the poetry are too personal and it's just for you. So I don't want to publish. But then these poetry got published in the, the title Sonnet from Portuguese. Browning would call her little Portuguese. Then we have Matthew Arnold, the man, you know, uh, Matthew Arnold's father. He died and uh, Matthew Arnold didn't write any work, any dedication to him. So uh, after 15 years of the death, 15 years, Matthew Arnold wrote a famous work, Rugby Chapel. In Rugby Chapel, he talks about his father, his father's school time and everything. So people question that why do you remember your father after 15 years? Around 15 years, you have uh, not talked about your father. Why are you talking uh, about your father after so many years? You know what did he say? He said, I promised my mother that my father will be celebrated by the greatest writer and I have achieved that status. He said that my father would be celebrated by the greatest writer ever and now I am at that level. That's why I'm writing. Now I deserve to write. He was the professor of poetry at Oxford. Professor of poetry at Oxford University. These are main poets. Then there are some multiple groups like Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. So, you know, the poetry is are full of two things. First, enthusiasm, or we can simply say some kind of energy. Enthusiasm is there. Faith, love, and then depression. Melancholy. We can write it as melancholy. See, two different things. We're talking about the famous poet. We're talking about the content they have written. Enthusiasm. Like Tennyson has written Ulysses in 1840, uh, 1842. Ulysses. He talks about, let's go and seek a new world. Let's conquer a new world. It's not too late. Let's fight back. What is the use of sitting at home and getting old? We are not uh, born to be uh, sitting at the, uh, with, sitting with wife, eating the food and dying like that. We have been given a life to fight back. We have been given a life to do something to make the best use of life. Tell me, what do you think? Do you want to sit at home, idle life, just woke up, eating food, watching Netflix, sleeping, dying like that? Or you have been given a body, you have been given energy, you have been given a mind by God. God has given everything and you want to utilize it. You want to do something. Tennyson says, that, you know, what is the use of that sword which doesn't shine in use? So we have enthusiasm. He says, let's go. In Lotus Eaters, he says, courage, he said, and pointed towards the shore. He says, let's go, let's do it. We won't surrender. But then we talk about faith. Yes, Arnold has faith in God. Arnold was one of the strong advocate of religion. Arnold represents uh, Victorian pessimism also because that faith was being shaken. Arnold talks to his beloved, uh, you know, it was a honeymoon actually. Sometimes I really wonder 
you go to honeymoon with a sadistic person arnold was like life is so boring life is so dull oh my god if people are killing each other there is no happiness he say the sea of faith was once too full and girdled the earth <laughs> but now there is no love he says our love let's be true to one another because the world that seems full of joy has no love no joy so arnold was this kind of man when i was in andamans i recorded uh, this video also but because of the darkness i was not visible so maybe i don't remember if it's on youtube i have posted or not but arnold supports faith love and also say that people have lost faith then love who best can speak about love better can speak about love robert browning nobody can beat robert browning in victorian uh, love or romantic poetry you know he just uh, says uh, what are the opening lines of uh, last night together fail i alone in the words and deeds all men strive but who succeed he shows his love he shows his faith you read my last duchess he says there is a line a heart how shall i say too soon made easily glad just amazing thing and victorians were also dealing with enthusiasm and depression browning goes for enthusiasm in pippa passes he says god is in his heaven and everything is right with the world this this is you know robert browning just amazing writer unbelievable writer and then we go for depression melancholy so tennyson has also written something like tethonus he talks about depression melancholy but primarily it's matthew arnold matthew arnold speaks for pessimism in victorians please write it the one who explains pessimistic attitude or the most pessimistic writer nirashavadi kavi it's matthew arnold pessimistic writer the most pessimistic writer because he didn't like that change he thought that we are deviating our ways from god we are moving towards something which is wrong we are losing our faith in religion so matthew arnold is very much pessimistic he just talks about that we must respect our lives we must uh, be uh, true to our nature our religion our god our faith and we must not challenge god we must not challenge in tethonus tennyson also says you remember my offline wala class when i was in front of you unfortunately some cases have uh, come uh, appeared and uh, i'm teaching in offline way this is not the way i teach in online it is offline style <laughs> because in online there is audio or some formal video see i was teaching you tennyson i talked about tethonus i told you that there was a boy he was loved by a goddess and the goddess said ask me a boon so boy said that i want to become immortal remember we were talking about that gods are jealous of us because gods are immortal and we are mortal so we have emotions we value time so that boy becomes 400 years old here tennyson also shows this thing that men must not challenge the god the uh, authority of god if god doesn't want us to be immortal then we must not try to become immortal i i would have asked you your stand be if god doesn't want you to become immortal so then don't try to challenge god otherwise you will have consequences you will have bad results so he asked his girlfriend to uh, get immortality as a boon he got immortality but again it was against the law law of nature law of god so he is suffering he is 400 years old his skin is touching ground bones are crushed he has lost his uh, energy he can't even move so he is suffering so tennyson also says that that we should go for advancement we should go for learning but we should not forget that we don't have to challenge the authority of god okay so yahan pe this is the space here please add one more point right side wala yahan pe aapko yaad rakhna hai italian renaissance italian renaissance most of the victorian poetries were having direct connection with italian renaissance dealing with art and craft mostly paintings 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 ke bahut reference hai okay so please remember this point i think uh, i'll see it clearly italian renaissance most important part of victorian poetry now we switch to victorian style of novels what kind of novels these guys were writing primarily realism 
You can also write like this realistic approach. Their novels were very much close to life, putting realities of life, realistic approach. And here we also got multiple developments in uh, novel writing. Most of these people, they were writing about realities, problems of society. Then, you know, Newgate novels, they appeared. Newgate novel. What are Newgate novels? The novels dealing with the lives of goons, wrongs, criminals. Lives of goons and criminals. Newgate novel. What was the name of, uh, uh, why name, why it's called Newgate? Newgate was a prison. Jail ka naam tha Newgate. Newgate was the name of a prison. Please uh, don't forget this point. Newgate was the name of the prison. So, Newgate novels also appeared in Victorians. Why so? Because, you know, the, when the crime started increasing, why the crime started increasing? Simple. Social gap, class gap, poverty. People became over rich, poor people became more, uh, more poor. So the rich became richest, the poor became poorest. So when there is a big class gap, obviously there are people that are going to fight because they also were following the philosophy, scientific theory of Darwin, Darwinism. What is the theory of Darwinism? Darwinism. The concept 1859, origin of species, question of net exam, they asked timing, timing of this, origin of species, 1859. Darwin believed in this point that it's all about survival and the one who deserves to survive will survive. Called survival of the fittest. If you don't, if you keep complaining, you say, sir, nahi ho pa rahe, sir, nahi ho pa rahe. Darwin says you don't deserve to survive. Darwin says it's the survival of the fittest. It's somebody who is acclimatized, anukulan, become according to society. Remember Irfan ka, there is a famous dialogue in Bollywood. He says that, Iman dari ka kissa khatam, jaisi dunia waise hum. So the world is like that. You have to be one of them. It's just a race. And if you don't compete in race, you will die. So Darwin believed in this concept, survival of the fittest. Taking the reference of a street dog. A street dog, a bitch, has multiple puppies, eight puppies, nine puppies. But how many of them survive? Just two or three? Because they know how to snatch food, they know how to show the teeth in anger, and they know how to bite back. So somebody who, you know, uh, is fittest, Deserves to survive. Veer Bhogya Vasandhara. You are brave, you deserve the fear. Tennyson ki line hai, only the brave deserve the fear. Veer Bhogya Vasandhara. So the concept is here, simple. They said that the prisoners who are in the prison are not criminals. They are made criminals by society. There are two types of criminals. One is a criminal by nature. One is a criminal by you know, situations. So, like if we just uh, keep this thing in our mind, you know, a criminal by nature, by choice, by having all other options still went for crime and somebody who did it, what will you say to a person who steals the bread for his kid? Will you call him a criminal? Let's assume the kid is hungry for the last two years. Two, sorry, two days. The kid is hungry. Two days. Father has no options left and he steals bread. There is a movie of Amitabh Bachchan and Rishi Kapoor, uh, Diwar. One of my favorite movies because I have done a Marxist, Marxist study of this particular movie. Someday I'll get a chance to uh, I'll go for a YouTube video. There is a scene, Rishi Kapoor is running after a boy. He has stolen something. He says, stop, stop, I'll shoot. And finally he shoots him. That is also something stupid. Why are you shooting a thief? But he's shot. And when uh, Rishi Kapoor reaches to the boy, he's carrying the bread in his hand. He says, my parents are hungry. They are blind. 
they are hungry it's been 2 3 days i couldn't get even a single bread for them so i stole this bread so can you call him a criminal this spirit made new get people the new get prison inmates they were got celebrated the goons the criminals they got celebrated the people started talking about the story you know the criminal do you know the story so they started glamorizing their lives glamorize kar diya shuru kar diya unko and they became famous they, you know the new get novels they all became famous vanity fair is also has some reference with new get prison then multiple other books were dealing with the same kind of the stories but concept is that they uh, you know they actually glamorized these kind of lifestyles like criminals are there and we are like okay criminals are there but they were forced to be a criminal so new get novel appeared okay uh, it was also criticized like uh, there were some uh, people uh, writers balwar litton and all they were so much uh, famous for writing new get novels that some good people will philosophy they said that whatever is there hunger is there need is there no crime crime is not justified at any moment so some of them were criticizing also that if you celebrate a thief other person will also become a thief we watch movies right we all watch movie movies you must have seen some bollywood movies where rich people are thief race 1 race 2 race 3 doom 1 doom 2 doom 3 you know the massive hit movies but who were the protagonist unka jo main hero tha wo tha kya just because you are rithik roshan we won't call you a chor are chor to chori hai na just because you have technology you are not a chor because we have been given that idealistic image that a chor is somebody bad looking scars on the face stealing in the house like this no and if it's a rithik roshan with chashma washman some background music then it's okay how many of you felt watching dhoom 2 that i want to be a chor <laughs> in childhood i was like okay <laughs> but this thing you know glamorizing those things it's wrong how hope you understand just because chor jo hai wo bahut glamorous hai that doesn't mean sabko chor banna chahiye <laughs> now as we told i told you that uh, the society was having a lot of rich people filthy rich one of uh, the dream of people they want to become filthy rich so there were some other novels fashion novels dealing with the lives of rich people so uh, okay this is wrong there's silver fork actually silver fork novels silver fork novels silver fork spoon also says that the silver fork club silver fork spoon club silver fork novels the novels written by the rich people for rich people primarily this writer was the most important one benjamin disraeli he was the one so they were writing about the poor people they were writing about the criminals and then there were some people those who were away from realities and were writing only for the rich class silver fox stories silver fox novels so victorians were dealing with all these kind of things and all these literature then one more development is there in victorians and here we go to get because you know this will connect us to modern age see the other kind of development was science fiction see they actually started writing in around 1895 and then it comes but primarily this is the bridge it connects victorians to moderns they may ask you a tough question that when victorians were moving towards the modern age the last kind of literature the what kind of literature in the last of victorians was written it is primarily science fiction or the political novels palliser novels we call them palliser novels so mostly science fiction or the political novels these are the last literature in victorians political novels primarily written by anthony trollope political novels also called palliser novels repeating once again two types of 
literature appeared at the end of Victorian when they were almost entering in the modern age. We are talking about 1890s, 1895, 1900. So we know that the last 10 years, also called the, uh, the naughty 90s, the last 10 years. See, political novels, mostly by Anthony Trollope, also called Palliser novels, same name. And science fiction. These things connect the Victorian literature to moderns. Science fiction, we all know. Science dealing with development of science and fantasy stories. Dealing with some kind of, you know, scientific references. Okay. Uh, I, sh I should write it again. <laughs> so, science fiction. And what was this? A story, a plot, which has some scientific experiments and which results a story. So, science was actually used as a science romance. It also has three categories, science romance, science fiction and cyborg literature are the very uh, latest literature. So Victorians, those who were dealing uh, with modernism, modern conditions, situations of war, war conditions, you know, around 1886 uh, or 1885, proper machine guns were started, uh, you, uh, you know, being used in the war. Crimean war was going on in 1863. So it was also the time that people were actually planting the seeds for World War One. So conditions like that changed over the England was at the heights. France was competing England. England and France had multiple fights in America and Canada. Because uh, many of you must be knowing that America, Canada, Canada for all the Punjabis, it's Canada. Uh, that is again a post-colonial study. Yes, I can do that. I, I have uh, taken a special lecture why Canada is different, why Canada is different. So... America, Canada were both uh, colonized by France also. Some territories were controlled by England, some territories were controlled by France and England and France, they both would have fights. Even in India, if you remember the 1757 fight, the fight of Plassey, Plassey ka jo wada, wada, uh, 1757, mein. that was also between like Clive uh, was there the, from French people, then some Indian Sirajuddaullah was there, some Britishers were there. So Britishers would support Indians to fight French. Sometimes the French would support, uh, Tipu Sultan was supported by French. Hyder Ali was supported by French. Uh, once I prepared for CDS, Combined Defense Services, so I know some history, historical references. So they would have regular fights, fights with the Goa, Pondicherry, they all have French colonies. They, they were French colonies. They have references. If you uh, go to Pondicherry, to the beach side, you will find a proper French culture there, proper French culture there. Yeah, it is one of one of my dream to go to Pondicherry. So let's see someday I go and I'll be teaching French literature from there. So this happened here. They were having regular war issues and everything got converted into world war situation. Now, here we enter in 1901 to 19 approx 45. Technically we can divide it in moderns. High moderns and then post moderns. The center became human. Earlier it was family life, social life. Now an individual became the center. The moderns, they started talking about family unit first. High moderns, they started talking about the value of relations running in the family only, identity of people in the family only. And postmoderns, they started questioning the identity, identity crisis. This is the development. The family unit in respect of society, in comparison of society. Then identity in the family only, values in the family, the kitchen sink drama and all. Husband-wife relationship, father-son relationship, father-daughter relationship. Uh, uh, D.H. Lawrence dealing with the sexuality in the family. And then... Postmodern, who are we, what are we, what is my identity, what I'm doing, I feel like a woman, I live like a man, queer theories, advanced post structuralist theories, all these things came here. I hope you have narration in the narration, but I'll narrate. Moderns, there were still some wars going on. We know the world war, 1914 to 1918, the first world war. 
and then we go for the second world war 1939 to 1945 after world war the situation of panic the psychological panic it you know uh, uh, prevailed do you know russia and china and america still can fight like present day scenario today scenario russia has some issues with serious huge uh, issues with ukraine and they have posted around 90000 plus soldiers there the army has been deployed with tanks and the other uh, army vehicles ukraine has requested america and today's news is that america biden the president is uh, has made a call to the russian president putin and he has requested not to go for a war otherwise america would retaliate for ukraine whenever the war situation appears in 1961 the world war was almost going to start from american side america and russia but just one person he denied to use the nuclear weapon nuclear has two different keys nuclear weapon ki do chabi hoti hai one president one the another one in command that commander denied to use nuclear and the war didn't start but the russian submarines american submarines were facing each other in 1961 China used it for the benefit and went for a war in India because China knew America Russia are busy so let's go for India and in 1962 if you remember the war started Americans they sent some uh, you know fighter jets for India but it was too late when China because it is uh, in documents also that Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru getting frustrated from all the failures requested America I think it was Nixon he requested america to send around 2000 plus jet planes to fight the chinese he also requested that until unless indian pilots are trained to fly with u jets please send the american air force and nixon accepted this thing so when china got to know that america is going to enter now in support of china actually went for unconditional treaty unconditional uh, stop the war was stopped so these things happen so we know this that the wars uh, world wars they have a great impact on mind tell me this i ask you a question how many of you are really sure that you want to prepare for net and jrf and your future is in your hand aapko lagta hai ki aapka future aapke hand mein hai mujhe pata hai mera future mere haath mein nahi hai my future is in the hand of america russia china korea what if what if they start nuclear war what if they start nuclear war because biden has warned putin today so all these things will come to an end right the same thing happened after 1945 the depression the depression confusion question everything you know it resulted and people went for a new kind of uh, lifestyle which is also mentioned in beat generation drugs sex traveling music the hippie lifestyle <laughs> 1950s america got uh, a trend of hippies hippie style just roam around drink wine women the all the pleasures of life forget the life because you know i uh, don't know when are you are going to die aapko kab upar jana padega you don't know and your future fate is in control of somebody who has a nuclear so what to uh, why to worry about life and future thing just go and have fun so beat generation writers many of you must be knowing like jack kirok and the other writers iska spelling thoda dekh lena i am not sure ajeeb sa naam hai ye and uh, the alan ginsberg is there ye sab padhne hai in net ke net writers ke favorite question hai jack kirok alan ginsberg william s baro and mostly all of these writers were gay मोस्ट ऑफ दीज राइटर्स वर्क इन्होंने मेरे एक गे पार्टनर का मर्डर भी कर दिया था ऐसे मस्त राइटर्स थे सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द ब्रीफिंग नाउ वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग आवर टॉपिक्स वन बाय वन आई एम श्योर यू विल हैव क्वेश्चंस आई सजेस्ट यू मेक अ ग्रुप ऑफ थ्री और फोर पीपल फोर फोर ऑफ यू जस्ट लेट अस नो दैट वी फोर वांट टू मीट मेनी सर देन अनदर फोर एंड आई विल बी गिविंग यू अपॉइंटमेंट 30 मिनट्स फॉर एवरी ग्रुप सो चार चार लोगों का ग्रुप बनाओ those who are living in gsri only get a group of four people talk to the office also they will help you to be connected i'll ask them to go for a whatsapp group 
चार साल की ग्रुप बनाओ कम टू मीट मी इन द ग्रुप ऑफ फोर शो मी योर नोट्स शो मी योर प्रिपरेशन टेक होमवर्क डिस्कस योर कन्फ्यूजन डिस्कस योर प्रॉब्लम्स ओके बिकॉज टीचिंग इज गोइंग ऑन हेयर एंड आई बी सॉल्विंग योर प्रॉब्लम्स पर्सनली आई बी काउंसलिंग यू पर्सनली एंड दो जू लिव इन सम अदर एरियाज नॉट इन नॉट नियर बाय बट आर इन डेली ओनली बिकॉज यू आर ऑफ एंड स्टूडेंट्स सो दे ऑल्सो कैन कम ऑन सैटरडेज एंड संडेज टेक प्रॉपर अपॉइंटमेंट जस्ट से दैट वी वन और वी टू आर कमिंग ऑन द पर्टिकुलर टाइम सो आई बी अटेंडिंग यू गाइज ओके यू विल गेट एवरी थिंग हेयर आई बी पर्सनली डीलिंग विद योर प्रॉब्लम्स कम विद योर नोट्स सो दैट यू कैन शो मी द वे यू राइट द वे यू मेक नोट्स ओके गाइज सो आई बी लाइक डन फॉर टूडे ask questions feel free to ask questions and uh, there is a public number from uh, everyone 8810289637 8810289637 this is the public number where i respond when you write a message there on a whatsapp just mention that you are offline student because generally i search with the offline keywords so that my offline students get answer immediately because you know these lectures are lengthy so uh, right like this sir i am a b c d and i am from this state and i am your offline batch student i want that uh, offline keyword so i'll be responding you personally and also go for a whatsapp group where i am also added for you okay so thank you so much namaste